Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to another episode of Leave No Die Behind. Right now I am attempting to narrate a clip that is 8 minutes and 22 seconds long, uh, sped up to 300% and yeah, I was playing with a bunch of different jacquard acid dyes um, including a chartreuse which honestly is looking less chartreuse and more Kelly Green. The Kelly Green and Chartreuse that I have look really, really similar. I'm not sure if I have an off batch or what, but I layered on the Chartreuse, um, some of, I think, Brilliant Yellow, and now I'm layering on some more medium green speckles. I don't remember the color, but I will have it for the video description. And the yarn that I'm using today is Knit Picks Hawthorne. This is a high twist yarn. It is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid, and I love to both knit and dye it. Uh, if you want to learn more about the materials I'm using, you can find affiliate links in the video description, which means that I will earn a commission if you shop through my links, um, but I sort of promote the companies at my own discretion. Whoa, that's getting steamy. You can see I'm adding color and flipping it. I don't think I waited particularly long in between the flips here. I didn't mind if the color spread. And I knew that the speckles that we were creating here would be fairly subtle overall because the green isn't like super high contrast with what I had for that base. But I did have a bunch of dye that I had pulled out for another project. Oh right, this green is mixed with some citric acid powder uh, because I was speckling with it earlier. But hey, you guys have been wanting me to play with more green and I just am really excited by this colorway. It is so subtle, but it has a lot of dimension to it and I think with these even with these subtle speckles you could do a really complicated stitch pattern and I think it would still show up really well that thumbs up that just I just threw up means that I was happy with the color uh, I added a lot of water and let it soak and now we're washing with some dish soap at the end of speckling I like to increase my water volume and add more vinegar just to make sure everything is dissolved and set um, and yeah, I guess I'm washing it and showing you that we've got no bleeding. Ah, it's nice to not hear that water running, isn't it? All right, skein number two. I have some more of the same colors left over from a different project, but some of that I think sun yellow maybe from Jacquard, chartreuse. Again, I'm going to need to check on that chartreuse, but if it's correct, but uh, you can see that I had some dye powder left in these cups and I'm just dissolving it in to give us a nice base color. Uh, this time it's another skein of Hawthorne fingering weight yarn and with my reflection of the colors that I have left over, there's some Jacquard gunmetal, Jacquard spruce, both mixed with citric acid powder and whatever that medium green is. I'm honestly not as familiar with all the Jacquard names as I am with the Dharma names, um, but I do enjoy it as well. So we do have two colors that are deeper and more pigmented and less bright than that first skein. And again, I'm trying to leave no dye behind, so I'm gonna go in really, really heavy with speckles. I let the colors that had no citric acid mixed in sort of give us that nice base color. You could speckle really heavily onto white and let those colors sort of wash out. <coughs> Excuse me. But I did want something that still felt fairly subtle, even with getting these heavy speckles that do give that contrast. So compared to the previous skein that I did, this one uh, could still be used on like a more busy stitch pattern, but the colorway is more busy because there are those like patches of dark and light. So I think that this one would look really nice on a simpler pattern um, as well. But of course I haven't swatched it or anything. But as you'll see from, you know, speckling, and I guess I did wait some period of time there, um, but speckling and moving a bit, because some of the colors spread out, the backdrop is getting less bright. Gosh, I love, ooh, goody, a close-up. <laughs> uh, I love these steam pans. Uh, they are full size, four inches deep, stainless steel, and I can fit them across two burners in my stove. I especially love dyeing only one skein at a time in them. 
Ooh, look at that dye spread out. That was so pretty where the colors hit the water first. Whew, that was gorgeous. This is a separate day from the first one, but skein three will be done immediately after this one. And as I was saying, I love using one skein of yarn at a time in these pans. Being able to spread it out so much makes it easier to get coverage, especially with heavy speckles. When the pan is more crowded with, say, three skeins, 300 grams of yarn in there, that can get more complex. So I really enjoy this. And I think I started getting to a point where I felt really satisfied with the color, but I still had some powders left. And so that's when I always have to like take a deep breath and think. Do I want to go beyond what I'm really enjoying in terms of the colorway? And actually, maybe I'm about to do one more round of some speckling. I have a feeling I'm going to add a few more speckles. Um, <laughs> I was probably just drying my hands off off camera. But yeah, there's, there's always a point where I'm leaving no dye behind where I'm like, okay, I can add the rest of the dye on and then maybe take it further from where I love, but I really like where I am now. So maybe I need to find one other skein of yarn and dye another type of colorway, which, and I've mentioned before, I know that I have the ability to make those decisions because I have a lot of bare yarn that I can dye and this is my job and I have the shop and everything. Uh, but I think that if I didn't have a plethora of bare yarn to play with for these videos, then I would probably, once I was happy with this colorway, I would set the rest of the dyes aside and save them for another day. Uh, as I picked that up, I was trying to drain off as much of the water as possible. And this, what I'm adding in right now is I think a dry skein. Yeah, it looks like it was dry because I'm trying to wet it now of Nick Picks Bear Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino. Uh, this yarn actually does soak up water pretty quickly, uh, but I am trying to get it fairly wet before starting to add the color. And this time I wanted to do something a little different. I'm adding some more water to give us some more immersion. And I'm just sprinkling on those powder powders in a diagonal pattern. I'm not entirely sure why I decided to go diagonally, except for this is going to give us something fairly non-repeating because they're going to be segments and different stretches for these colors depending on where you are. If I had done these stripes more straight, then we would have had something be a little more repeating. But I think I just wanted to make sure we got some reasonable coverage of these colors and I believe oh no I guess I didn't say I was like maybe I saved some for the other side but nope I guess I didn't I just sort of went for it and here we are washing these two with some dish soap that color is set but I love how different these are and you can get such different colors playing with the same few and whoop that's time I love filming Leave No Die Behind videos, and I especially find it fun and challenging to sort of speed everything up and then narrate it, reflecting on what I accomplished. All three of these skeins were created using very similar colors, but dry as a dye powder. Some of it was on its own, some of it was mixed with citric acid, and you can really do a lot of different things. The first two started with a nearly identical base color, but in the first one, we just had, you know, a medium green for speckles, and the second one, in addition to that medium green, we also had navy and spruce. And so this, that took this to a less neon feeling colorway, but they still have a great base color. The speckles in the first one are much more subtle. They're green on green, but because we started with a brighter green as that base, we have that neon vibrant feel. Whereas I think if I was using just that medium green uh, and doing heavy speckles, but letting it wash out on the yarn like I've done in some other cases, which actually may not have been shown yet, but I have done, uh, I think that it would have been felt more of a pastel green versus this vibrant neon tone. 
With the last of the dye mixed with citric acid, I wanted to do something differently. And on some Swish DK, which is also Superwash, I layered on those colors in heavier strips in a diagonal way in the pan. This gives us a non-repeating colorway that is unique and fun. It's non-repeating because the color sections are going to be different lengths at different part of the skein. I'm not sure if it would read as, say, a gradient or something, but it's still fun and unique. There are definitely some speckles in here where the colors struck before they could spread out, um, before I shimmied it to help them spread out. But it's just a fun thing that like, you don't have to go for speckles when you have leftover dye mixed with citric acid crystals. You could mix it with water and use that to make a semi-solid tonal yarn. You could speckle with it, or you can use it straight and create a fun colorway. The most important thing to do when you're trying to leave no dye behind is have fun. Could I have placed a dye in some containers and stored it for a later date? Absolutely, and that's something I do sometimes. But I also like to have this chance to just say, okay, I want to use up this color. What can I create that's a little bit different from what I've created before? There's nothing wrong with repeating colorways. <laughs> I have things I like to go to and visit again and again and again myself. But it's also fun to play around with different combinations and see what kinds of effects I can create because then I know, ooh, I might want to go and do more of this and play around with these colors together more in the future. There have been a lot of requests lately for me to play with more green, and so this Leave No Dye Behind came up at a perfect time. At least at the time when I'm editing this, not necessarily the time when it's going to be released, but you know, I'm playing with more green. <laughs> the point is I do read and listen to comments, and I add all of your suggestions and requests into a list of my ideas. and. Sometimes your comments help me bump things up the queue from what I was already planning, or you, sometimes you guys even give me completely new ideas. And so I love interacting with you. Uh, so please comment with your suggestions. Make sure you're also subscribed, have notifications turned on, and give this video a like. That is the biggest way engaging with these videos that you can help support the Chemnitz Tutorials content. Of course, if you want to support us on another level, there are options. I have an Etsy shop, there's some Zazzle merch, and I do have a Patreon. Chemnitz patrons get early access to new videos each month, the Die Cut PS series. Um, they can get behind the scenes sneak peeks, permanent Etsy shop coupons, and more. You can find details on the Patreon link, which will be in the video description and iCard. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this video.